They know that you care about them, and it's also you get to hear how they feeling about certain situations, and you get the news quicker than the news gives it to you. Yeah, no, it's yeah. great. Six in the morning. What do you do every night till six in the morning? You don't go to clubs every night. No, I mean, I, I mean, I make love a lot. And, uh... <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres was daytime TV's queen of nice. She danced, she talked to cute kids, and surprise, she's a huge asshole. Ellen DeGeneres feeling the heat. Bullying now even sexual harassment. A lot of his people that know him, a lot of the people that been in those parties and seen probably some unscrupulous sh that went down and was like, ooh, I was there. There was a time Ellen DeGeneres was a name synonymous with a good heart. She danced on her show, she loved little kids, and seemed to be friends with every single celebrity. And then she fell off. Meanwhile, one of her friends is also in hot water, and fans now see a connection between the former host and the disgraced hip-hop mogul, the infamous Puff Daddy. There was a time Ellen DeGeneres had it all. A seemingly friendly relationship with her subordinates, a kind image and connections with everyone in the industry. Her show, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, ran for 19 seasons, and she was one of the most popular daytime talk show hosts on TV. Except in 2020, accusations started coming out that she wasn't what she portrayed herself to be. Ellen DeGeneres was daytime TV's queen of nice. She danced, she talked to cute kids, and surprise, she's a huge asshole. Ellen DeGeneres feeling the heat. Bullying now even sexual harassment. Hey, Ellen DeGeneres, I hope you never find employment again. Turns out Shorty is a demon. Somebody stop this woman before it's too late. Some former employees actually said that Ellen's be kind mantra, it was all for show. This came as a terrible revelation for a lot of people. Since Ellen wasn't just known for her good reputation, she had become an icon when she openly admitted to being gay at a time it wasn't something to be proud of. I'm gay. <laughs> And Ellen also followed suit, and that's when America learned that she was also gay. Why was it necessary for you to come out, tell the public? Why was it necessary for the character to do so? Because it's okay. Because it is okay. Ellen appeared on the cover of Time, where she actually came out as an openly gay woman. Unfortunately, during that time, America was not ready to watch an openly gay woman on a sitcom. The ratings declined in 1998. It was eventually canceled. I was not told that it was canceled. I was told through an assistant who read it in the trades. She bounced back from every obstacle put in her way and even broke the internet with her famous 2014 Oscars selfie. Meryl, can you take it? I can't get everybody in here. Don't we fight? All right, I got to move. Okay. Better? Your arm. All right. My arm goes way All right. My arm's definitely better. Go. Okay. That's hey, that's Ready? good. Look at us. Ready? Nice! Oh, oh yes! We did it! Thank you! Except her kindness was all a show, and some pretty harrowing rumors started circulating after a BuzzFeed expose. The Ellen DeGeneres show is facing new allegations this morning. Ellen's alleged bad behavior had been whispered about in the industry for years. But then BuzzFeed published this bombshell expose that revealed a toxic workplace culture at the Ellen DeGeneres show with claims of alleged racism, fear, intimidation, and sexual misconduct. The accusations were kind of wild against Ellen. Supposedly, you weren't allowed to look her in the eye, she treated staff like peasants, and one former writer of her show said that she had a sensitive nose. That means you weren't allowed to have bad breath, order fish for lunch. Several people started coming out with stories, explaining how her kind and down-to-earth image was just a scam, and she was horrible to her staff. Internal investigation, they interviewed more than 100 people connected with the show, and now Ellen's leadership team is getting overhauled. We were told from the very beginning, don't talk to Ellen, don't do this, you can't, you know, go into her office. It was very nerve-wracking, very stressful. We all walked on eggshells all the time. Supposedly she would tear up bad scripts in front of writers, in front of the whole staff to humiliate them. One makeup artist was quoted as saying that when he tried to make small talk with Ellen, she supposedly said, who do you think you are? Don't look at me. Ellen's former bodyguard, Tom Madrasak, also spoke out, noting that he was assigned to her during the 2014 Oscars and that she was the one person out of many celebrities he's been assigned to that, quote, has never taken the time to say hi to me. Of course, she denied having any responsibility, instead making an obscure apology. She even had the nerve to imply she was kicked out of show business. Reportedly saying, I got kicked out of show business. There's no mean people in show business. 
The be kind girl wasn't kind. I became this one-dimensional character who gave stuff away and danced up steps. Do you know how hard it is to dance up steps? Would a mean person dance up steps? Now this trajectory might remind you of someone else, though admittedly on a much larger and much worse scale. That's right, we're talking about Ellen's good friend, the now infamous Sean Diddy Combs. His downfall started when his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura sued him and escalated when he was slapped with a gigantic civil lawsuit by his ex-producer Rodney Jones. These, along with many others, alleged some pretty horrific stuff about the rapper. Producer named Little Rod Jones had sued him for sexual harassment, sexual assault, was alleging absolutely hor horrendous things against him. And this is on the heels of other lawsuits. Remember, Cassie Ventura had filed a lawsuit against him. She settled the day after, but she accused him of rape and human trafficking. I mean, the worst stuff you can imagine. The allegations included rape, drug abuse, violence, and for Cassie, over a decade of threats and coercion. And it all came to a head when federal investigators stormed two of his Miami and Los Angeles homes as part of a sex trafficking operation. But just like Ellen, he has also vehemently refused any responsibility despite the level and number of accusations hurled at him. In fact, he called the multiple lawsuits against him cash grabs, saying that people only wanted to defame him and his family. Music mogul tells E! News in a statement, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. He adds, let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. But no matter what, it looks like his victims refuse to stay silent any longer, and there have been more and more people speaking out against him. So how does Ellen factor in? For one, both are known to be on good terms, and both of them are also proven narcissists who treat people around them like trash. In fact, Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene Deal even exposed him for abandoning people who helped him get where he was. But I will not let this name go down as if he was this greatest thing that <laughs> Makes up for all of it. All right. All right, 45 seconds on the clock. Go. Um, oh, uh. Tap dancing. Yes, yes. Um, uh. Gangnam style. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um. Ballet. Yes. Um. What you did at that party that night. <laughs> <laughs> and there have been hints here and there that Ellen was part of the rapper's so-called freak-offs, even though she hasn't weighed in on the issue yet. But the most telling moment was when she was asked about the Diddy scandal and whether she had been to any of his parties. Ellen, were you surprised by the allegations about P. Diddy? Did that surprise you about P. Diddy? Alan, He's been on your show many night. times. Have, a good night. Have you been to his parties? Fans noted that her silence speaks volumes and that she knows we know she knows.
Which brings us to another suspicious interview. Even if Ellen was at some of his parties, it looks like she didn't show up to all of them because he called her out on it. So tell me about your birthday party. Am I invited? Yes. Yes, you're definitely invited. When I invite you to all my parties. You just haven't seen the show up to No, me. well, there. <laughs> is it on the East Coast? Yes. Well, that's why. Why don't yeah. you have one here on the West Coast? Because I work all the time. OK, well, maybe I have one at your house. Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> After that, things. How old were you when you first started getting interested in? I was wild. I was yeah. different. I was from a whole nother time. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my God. Fans also uncovered some unnatural behavior in a 2017 interview where Diddy appeared with French Montana, who was then signed to Diddy's Bad Boy Entertainment in a joint venture deal with Rick Ross's Maybach Music Group. Notice how Diddy cut himself off when talking about going partying. This was also after Montana talked about how he had flown him and his friends from Las Vegas to New York when they first met. Fans later pointed out how Ellen's is sexy when you party line about Montana was strange, especially since grooming allegations have come out against Diddy. Of course, French Montana was an adult, but that doesn't rule out coercion. You can make it and do nothing and just uh, and just party and be sexy while you, apparently you're very sexy when you yeah. party. Um, uh, but yeah. you're doing... I'm talking, no, 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 uh, but I'm talking about... Uh, uh, I no, see Ellen, how Ellen. It, it's starting. Um, <laughs> What, what? No, no, I... when I talk about partying, when I was talking about partying just now, I'm talking about when we... Diddy also rushed to clarify that the party he was talking about was his and Montana's upcoming performance on the show. Montana later left Bad Boy after the release of his album, They Got Amnesia, though he said he parted on good terms. Of course, people have pointed out that fans might just be overanalyzing Ellen and Diddy's behavior because of their bad impressions of them. It seems like some people are eager to find a scandal in every Diddy video. But the fact remains that when you consider what sort of person Diddy has been revealed to be, it's natural that everyone would be suspicious. So, was Ellen really a part of Diddy's freak-offs? Or did she manage to keep her distance until the end? Let's wait and see whether she comes out with a statement. That's it for now. Don't forget to tell us what you think in the comments below. For more updates, hit the bell icon.